Okay, so we're here in Marion County um, with Terry Vendesca and we're checking out Corn Harvest. And um, you can see, I'm gonna turn it around here, you can actually see over here that we are unloading into the grain cart on the go. So um, it kind of saves the farmers time. They don't have to go the semi down here at the end of the field. Um, will then um, be where the grain cart goes but it saves them time to unload on the fly. Um, he has a capacity within the combine of about 350 bushels, but he said normally at about 300 he starts um, to unload. Um, so we'll, we'll hop over here and let Terry kind of tell us a little bit about what's going on. So um, Terry, you said that most all of your corn that you plant is um, dry land acres and with no irrigation and what are you normally hoping for um, for a yield? Well, our yields vary from 150 to 160 on better ground like this to 100 to 130 on tougher upland. It just all depends how much rainfall we get. And right now there's that if you see that little handy dandy screen over Terry's shoulder that's telling us that we're actually at about 155 bushels um, per acre on this field so the corn's cutting really well um, one other thing that uh, farmers are keeping an eye on is the moisture in the corn so you want it to be um, at a under a certain moisture so that it doesn't go too wet to the field and kind of talk about why you care about the moisture in the corn Terry well, we just as soon sell just as much weight as we possibly can, so we like the corn to be as wet as it can be without any dock at the elevator. Plus, the corn harvests better if it's a little bit higher moisture than it is right now. Uh, when it gets to be 12 or 13 percent moisture, there's a tendency sometimes for some ears to fly when the, when the corn head gets some. Uh, but if you can be at 15 percent, it harvests a lot better. The problem is our local elevators are all going outside on piles in, in bunkers with all of the corn. They're putting the soybeans in the elevator, the corn's going out on a bunker, so the corn's got to be under 16 moisture. So we couldn't begin harvest as early as we would have liked because it had to be under 16 before we could even start. And then the rain started over three weeks ago and we've been fighting rain and mud ever since. So we're at least two weeks behind with harvest. Well, and the reason the rain affects it is not only just because the, the field's soggy, but how about how much does this combine weigh? Oh, combines, it, it varies by, by brand. It's, it's a significant amount of weight, plus you get 300 uh, bushels of, of corn in the bed and it's, it's very wet. So you don't really want the combine to sink into the field and then just getting in and out. And over time, you obviously don't want to, driving in a wet field can really leave an impact that soil for future too. So you, you want to yes. make sure. That's exactly right, Stacy. We're 100% no-till. Uh, this particular field will probably go back to soybeans. A lot of our upland fields, the, the harvest of corn, cornfield will go into wheat. We actually have one field of wheat already planted in a cornfield, so the, uh, the air seeder will be planted right behind the combine as soon as the ground gets a little bit drier. And so if you look over um, where we've cut already, the corn stalks are there. So you're saying with no-till, those stalks will stay in the field? Exactly right. That's and, exactly. and then you'll just plant the beans right into those? We'll plant the beans into those in the spring or this fall. If we're, we're planting wheat, we will plant the wheat right into the residue. And that really helps break down and then add more nutrients back. Kind of that idea of composting back into the soil. That's exactly right. If uh, maybe when we, we stop, you get out, you can look at the ground, at the soil below us. I'm seeing uh, corn stalks from two years ago. We followed that corn with we, we harvested the